Kubernetes, Kubernetes, Kubernetes. Everyone knows how popular and demanding Kubernetes is. Almost every application these days is deployed on Kubernetes and every job description requires candidate having Kubernetes skills. Due to this popularity, most people start with learning Kubernetes directly without having their fundamentals cleared, which is not the right approach. Kubernetes is really complex and without proper foundational knowledge, it can turn out so horrible, wasting your time, your money, and also making you question if DevOps is the right path for you. And this is why in this video, I will tell you all the necessary tools and technologies you need to know before learning Kubernetes. Having knowledge on these tools will make your Kubernetes learning easier and faster. So without wasting any time, let's start with the video. The very first important topic you need to know before learning Kubernetes is containerization. As we all know, Kubernetes is a container orchestration tool responsible for managing, scaling and operation of application containers. So without containers, Kubernetes will have nothing to orchestrate. And this is why you need to have a good understanding of containerization. What are images? What are containers? What are container registries? And there are different software tools that can be used to build containers also known as container runtime, like Docker, Rocket, Cryo, Containerd, and lot more. But the very popular one is Docker. This is why you need to have good understanding of what is a Docker container, what are different commands used to manage container like Docker run, Docker ps, Docker stop, Docker images, and other commands. Also, what is Docker files? What is the structure? How can you write a Docker file and also try creating Docker file? On this channel, we have many projects that can help you understand what is a Docker file and how to create them as well. Along with this, you also need to have an idea of what is Docker images and learn how to create images for your application. We also need to know what are Docker containers, how are they created. First, we create a file, then we create an image, and then we run a container. Next, we have Docker Compose. We use Docker Compose for multi-containers and you need to have knowledge of it. For all these concepts, I have learning resources here. And if you want to be able to share this document, do let me know in the comment section. So the first thing you need to know before learning Kubernetes is going to be containerization which is very, very important. Next, very important prerequisite before learning Kubernetes is Linux commands. Kubernetes and Docker use Linux operating system for managing containers. If I show you, I have Docker installed and if I were to get the Docker images in my machine, I'm going to run a command which is Docker images. Similar to this, there are different commands and for you to manage Kubernetes containers or clusters, you need to have proper understanding of how Linux commands work. Similar to Docker, for Kubernetes, you have kubectl or k9s, which are different CLI tools for Kubernetes, and you manage stuff in Kubernetes using commands. This is why having Linux knowledge is very important. So having Linux basics knowledge can help you create secure and performing applications on Kubernetes. So what should you be learning in Linux for Kubernetes? You need to know the basic commands, which can be file management commands, which are different commands of file management, navigating, permissions and other stuff. For example, file mod permissions. So how can you change permissions to a file using chmod or chown command? Process management to see what are the different running processes and how to kill them or how to manage them. Then networking basics. You need to be familiar with some networking commands like ping, IP route, I trace route that we have covered in the previous video. Also, you need to know text editors because you will be editing manifest files in your Kubernetes cluster. So you need to understand how Vim and Nano works. Similarly, you need to know system information to check how much CPU or RAM is present in your machine or if they can handle new containers or not. So these are all the different things you need to know in Linux and I have an excellent resource which covers all these commands in one video. Next, very, very, very important topic before you learn Kubernetes is networking. In Kubernetes, you will come across networking terms like load balancing, firewalls, port-to-port -port communication, ingress, egress, all these terms require you to have networking knowledge. So in Kubernetes, understanding networking is super important. And without knowing about things like ports, load balancers, firewalls, you cannot successfully set up a Kubernetes application. And to have some networking knowledge, you can check out the previous video on this channel, which was networking for DevOps engineers, which will help you understand what is uh, ports, what is protocol, what is TCP, UDP, IP, uh, and a lot more. Also subnetting routing, so you can go check it out. Networking is important in Kubernetes because it is needed to exchange data between backends and frontend, also to expose your frontend applications, which can be web applications or websites 
to the internet. So you need to know networking if you want to work with Kubernetes. So networking is a big deal in Kubernetes to understand how deployments, pods, services, and other Kubernetes objects communicate with each other. So now you might be confused on what you need to know in networking for Kubernetes. So you need to have just foundational knowledge in networking. Later on, when you learn Kubernetes properly, there is going to be more advanced networking in Kubernetes. So before you learn the advanced part, you need to have good understanding in the foundational part. So you need to, you need to know what is IP addressing concepts, what is IPv4, what is IPv6. You need to know what are routing principles, how does routing happen. You also need to know what is subnetting and how can you distribute a huge network into small IP ranges, which is also side range that is explained in this particular video. Next, you need to know uh, different protocols. What is TCP protocol? What is UDP protocol? What is IP8 protocols? And also port numbers for different applications. So these are some of the things you need to know for networking before you learn Kubernetes. And you, this is a great resource for you to help with starting networking knowledge on Kubernetes. So make sure you have your networking concepts cleared before you start learning Kubernetes, which will help you save a lot of time. Next important prerequisite before learning Kubernetes is understanding microservices. Microservices is an architectural style where you deploy an application in different services talking to each other. And microservices is the architecture pattern, which is followed by Kubernetes, where each service is independently deployed as a container. So having an understanding of microservices is very important. Whenever you deploy an application, you will be most likely deploying it using microservices architectural style. For example, let's say you have an e-commerce application that follows microservices architecture. It will have database service as a container, front-end service as another container, back-end service as another container, and all of them will work together to create an e-commerce application. This is why you need to understand what is microservices architecture. You don't need to go deep, but you need to have a common understanding or basic understanding of what is microservices and how they work. So what to learn? You need to know the basics, so understand the basics. You need to know how microservices communicate with each other through RESTful APIs. You need to know how they are independent, so grasp the concept of each microservice operating independently with its own database and functionality. Next, you need to know how APIs work, so understanding how microservices expose APIs. And to understand all this properly, you should be doing hands-on projects. I already have many projects, you can check out this one to learn microservices on Kubernetes. Kubernetes can be deployed either locally or on the cloud. If you deploy it locally, you might be using Minikube or Kubeadium. But usually for production level clusters, we deploy Kubernetes on the cloud using cloud providers like AWS, which has AWS EKS or Elastic Kubernetes Service as Kubernetes cluster provider. Next, you can also use Azure Kubernetes Service or Google Kubernetes Engine. So Kubernetes is commonly deployed in the cloud and deploying Kubernetes in the cloud has many different advantages. Like you get the necessary infrastructure for hosting Kubernetes clusters, which can be virtual machines, storage, networking services, security, and a lot more. So having knowledge of cloud platforms is very important if you are starting to learn Kubernetes, because in the industry, no one is going to deploy it on locally. It will be deployed on cloud. So you need to understand how cloud works and how can you create clusters on the cloud. Cloud platforms also offer features like auto-scaling, load balancing, and monitoring tools that aligns with Kubernetes requirement for scalability and resilience. Along with cluster setup, you can also get more features like auto scaling, load balancing, monitoring your clusters through cloud platforms. This is why you need to have knowledge of cloud. To get understanding or to get knowledge of cloud, I would recommend you uh, gaining certifications in AWS, in Azure or GCP, anything you want to start with. Uh, so what to learn? You need to have cloud fundamentals, what is on-demand provisioning, scalability, pay as you go. You need to be familiar with any of the major cloud platforms. It can be either AWS or Azure or GCP, and also to know how to set up Kubernetes clusters in it. Next, you need to know deployment models, what apply public, private, and hybrid cloud. Service model, infrastructure as service, platform as a service, software as a service. Basic networking, that is also covered here uh, in the networking section, but in the cloud. So you need to use that knowledge and how you can use them in the cloud, which could be virtual networks, subnets, security groups. Next, you need to know how to create users, groups, and policies in using IAM, uh, how to attach storage to your clusters using storage services, which can be object-level storage, or block storage, or file storage. Next, security best practices, how can you encrypt your data, how can you provide access controls and compliance uh, when creating or managing Kubernetes clusters. You also need to know how to manage cost using monitoring, budgeting, and optimization to save cost when deploying applications on Kubernetes. 
And to learn all this, I would recommend you doing hands-on practice. Each of this cloud have their own training which are free and paid. Uh, you can choose to go with the free one to have understanding before you start with Kubernetes. Having knowledge of cloud is really important because these days everyone creates Kubernetes clusters on the cloud. No one is creating their own clusters. No one is using their local machines to create clusters. So you need to have understanding of cloud provider. Last but not the least prerequisite before learning Kubernetes is YAML. That stands for yet another markup language or YAML ain't markup language is a programming language which is used to write manifest files in Kubernetes. And YAML is not just used for Kubernetes manifest. It's also used for writing Ansible playbooks, creating CICD pipelines and lot more. So YAML is used to create manifest files responsible to create Kubernetes object in declarative way. So there are two ways to create Kubernetes object, either using imperative, which is by running a command or declarative where you create a manifest, something similar to this. So this is a declarative way of creating a deployment. And this is YAML language. And you can also check the extension for this file is api-deployment.yaml. So the extension for YAML files or YAML manifest ends with .yaml. So for you to create deployments, pods, replica sets, set full sets, anything in Kubernetes, you will be requiring knowledge of YAML. So you need to learn what is basic syntax uh, in which you can learn key value pairs, data types, handling lists, practical use, and also validation tools, best practices, because you will be using YAML a lot. This is a great learning resource for you to understand how YAML is used in Kubernetes and how to get started with learning YAML for Kubernetes. So this is everything you need to know before you learn Kubernetes in order to save your time troubleshooting issues or scratching your head. Uh, so I would recommend you having knowledge on all these concepts. Along with this, there is also one more thing that I would highly recommend you checking out is the 12 factor app. And it's present at this particular website, 12 factor apps, which include code based dependencies, config, packing services. This is a great resource, which has helped me a lot. Uh, so I would highly recommend you checking this out as well. So I hope this video was informative. And if you found this video helpful, please like the video. And if you have any questions, any doubt, do let me know in the comment section. Also, if you want me to share this document, do let me know in the comment section. I can share this on LinkedIn or on GitHub. So yeah, with that being said, I hope this video was informative. And now you know everything you need to know before learning Kubernetes. I hope you learn Kubernetes faster with all these prerequisites. If you want me to create tutorials on Kubernetes, do let me know in the comment section. Thank you and have a good day. Amen.